Hi, I'm Matt Martin, an application engineer with Harwood Incorporated. Today we are going to be covering how to calibrate your spindle probe in the Z-axis. The machine we're using today is an Akuma Genos M560B 5AX with a Renishaw RMB60 spindle probe. The tools required to complete this video are going to be a mag base, an indicator, 123 block, green gauge, and a test bar, or a tool of a known length. The first step of Z-axis calibration will be making sure the ruby itself is on center line of the spindle. The way we do this is by putting in a mag base and an indicator against the ruby tip and then spinning the probe by hand. If you notice there is substantial deviation in your indicator when spinning the probe, then you need to adjust the ruby with the four set screws on the top of the probe body. Once you've done that and you have it where there is no deviation, then what you need to do is go ahead and tighten down the set screws and make sure they're nice and snug so you don't get any kind of movement when the probe starts its routines. Step two of our Z-axis calibration is obtaining a work offset or our Z0. The way we do this is by using our mag base, our ring gauge, and our test bar. Once you have those all inside the machine, go ahead and drive your test bar down one to two inches above the surface of your ring gauge. Once you have that, use your one, two, three block and slide it in between the top of your ring gauge and the bottom of your test bar. As you move it down, make sure you keep moving your one, two, three block until it gets pinched and then move it off until you're barely feeling the bottom of that test bar. Once you have that there, go ahead, leave it in the machine, go to your control and go to your work offsets. In this instance, I'm using work offset number 60. Then go to the Z axis and press cal and then type in the length of your test bar plus the length of your one, two, three block, whichever side you used. I use the two inch side, so therefore I'm typing in the length of my test bar plus the two inches. Enter, once I type in enter, the machine is going to calculate the where the surface of your ring gauge is or your Z zero now. The way it does that is by using the known position of its spindle nose and the distance you told it between our work surface by using calculate length of test bar plus the extra one, two, three block. Step three of the Z-axis calibration is going to be obtaining an approximate probe length. A couple of different ways we can do that. So first one being using a presetter or a scale to find out the length of the, of the probe. But my personal favorite is going to be using the machine itself. The way we do that is by activating the work offset that you found in step two. So whichever work offset you use, whichever number, I use number 60, so in this case, I'm gonna do G15H60. Enter, cycle so start. That will make my work offset active. Also, you should highlight it in gold if you're looking at your work offset page, letting you know that it is the active work offset. Now that you've done that, we're going to turn our probe on with M127. Once the probe comes on, watching the green lights, you wanna then press your mid-auto manual button on the control and use the pulse handle to then now drive the probe down slowly until you touch the surface of your ring gauge, seeing the green light go to red. Once it goes to red, I back it off one and then I go down one increment on my pulse handle and then hand wheel it down again until I see the red lights. Once I see the red lights right there, we then wanna to go to our tool data page and select the tool offset for the spindle probe and then once you have it highlighted in blue, press calculate or cal zero, enter. You should then have a offset thrown into that value or thrown into that position in the machine. Once you've done that, the reason it does that calculation for you is because it knows where the spindle nose is and the work offset that we now have active, which is the surface. And we're telling it to calculate the distance between there by saying cal zero. How far away am I from my current work offset, Z0, okay? Now that you have that, go ahead and hand wheel your probe up off of the surface of your ring gauge. Once it's off, you can go ahead and hit reset, and we can move on to the next step of our Z-axis calibration. Step four of the calibration routine in the Z-axis will be running the Akuma cycle. This cycle is a call statement. Call, C-A-L-L, -L, space, 0010. Please reference the gauging manual from Akuma 
for the rest of the variables that need to be in that call statement or reach out to your local Hartwig distributor to get the program I'm running today. So once you have that program selected or the call statement ready, go ahead and manually drive the probe down to about a quarter inch above the surface of our reading gauge, which in this case is our active work zero or work offset. Once you have it there, go ahead and hit cycle start. And I would recommend running the first time slowly to make sure the probe works and operates correctly. After that, you know everything's running correctly, go ahead and turn your feed rate up to 100% and run it again. The reason we run it at 100% a second time is to make sure that whatever routine you're running inside the machine at the time is going to be running at 100%. We wanna make sure the trigger points inside the probe are calibrated correctly to that same feed rate. So, with running it now, probe should come on, making sure running it slow the first time, feed rate turns up, triggers, turn one notch up on the rapid, and let it finish. It's gonna do a second hit to make sure it's accurate. Once that's done, that's the end of the routine, you are now calibrated inside of your Z-axis. The way we will double check that is in step five, inside your gauging results. Step five of the Z-axis spindle probe calibration is going to go to our gauging results to make sure it is accurate and updated. So the way we do that is go to the main run screen, extension arrow over till you see display change, then go down till you see gauging results. Once you're inside gauging results, you wanna arrow over until you get to MSB tool. Once you get inside the MSB tool, we're paying attention to the MSB tool length offset chart, which is on the left side. We wanna look at number five, that's the important one. That's the one where the Akuma cycle stores the probing tool length offset, okay? So this is when you run your routines, it's gonna reference this tool length offset inside those routines. So we wanna make sure this number, we wanna copy it and paste over top of the number that we found as an approximate length to make sure it's accurate with what Akuma found. So we're gonna take the offset that we found inside of our gauging results and put it here inside of our tool length offset HA in this instance, or whatever tool length offset you have for the probe if you're on an older machine. We have now completed the calibration routine in the Z-axis for your spindle probe. For the program we ran today, please reach out to your local Hartwig distributor and they can provide that to you. Thank you for watching how to calculate your spindle probe in the Z-axis.